I greet you in the mighty, most powerful name of Jesus Christ, Son of God. We are thankful to God who has given us this brilliant, wonderful and wonderful day that has never been there before and will never be there. We are thankful to him for the divine guidance. The whole night has gone. As we are sleeping, we saw his presence. We saw his power. We saw his love. And we saw his greatness just cross to us. More than our clothes. More than whatever we have. And he proved himself to be our God. Lord Jesus one time was asked by the disciples, when is the kingdom of God coming back? <laughs> I remember the way he answered them. Wonderful. He said, the kingdom of God is already in you. I'm in you. You are in me. And I'm in the Father. So me and my Father and the Holy Spirit, they're staying new. Worry not. Brethren, these are wonderful privileges. Why well, I'm saying privilege? Because we have never asked for it. But God designed something good for all of us. We give him glory. We worship him. And we praise his holy name. For he has been so good to us. Thank you to his might, all powerful name. Which is above every name. Above every power. Above every wisdom and purpose of mankind. And we are very grateful to God. For his love to our lives. In the name of Jesus. So this morning. As we go to our call for prayer. And call for worship. I'd like us together to open our Bibles in the book of Zam, chapter 91. Zam, chapter 91. And I'm going to lead on verse 1 to verse to the last verse. The Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely, He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be shall shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that fright by the day, nor the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes thou shalt behold and see the reward of the wicked because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge even most high the habitation there shall no evil before thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways they shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder the young lion and the dragon shall do trample under feet because he has set his love upon me therefore will I deliver him I will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With a long life will I satisfy him and show him his salvation. Brother and sister, these are the promises of Most High God. God is a God of covenant. If you do this, I will do this. If you are keen to my voice, then this blessing shall follow you. Now, be careful with the uh, intimidation with the uh, negative people who would think that God considers something evil against us. God 
all the time is good and they think good about us now to understand this subject very clearly as we go to worship you need to know that god does not tempt a man god never tempt a man but always you will give him a test to go to the next level the purpose of a test is to know him better to understand his wisdom and his power but temptation comes from the devil and that's why the bible tells us that rebuke the devil and will free from you so god is good and you can't measure his goodness and we are thankful for serving this good wonderful and miracle making god blessed and glory be to his name so this morning as we ponder through his subject in the book of Psalm chapter 91 brethren there are some 10 things you need to note from this book of Psalm number one you need to know that God is your protection he is a faultless as we pray to him as you wake up in the morning and call upon his name is an immediate help he will never forsake those whom will, who loves him he will always be close to you and to your life he will never leave you neither forsake you all days of your life number two we need to know that we are living in the world full of battle the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 to 17 has made us to understand very clearly you know sometimes it was something like a secret it was a mystery but at least god has revealed it very clearly to us that brethren we're not battling alone we are fighting against principalities against powers against wicked forces of the evil one so it's a force one of the important weapon for this battle is the shield of faith that is able to quench every arrow of the enemy in the book of Psalm we've read 291 that there's an arrow that flies by, by noon <laughs> and the pestilence that flies by night human life is full of battle but those who trust in the Lord are strong they established and the battle is not them them the battle is the, for the Lord he will fight for our battles and will win in a great and wonderful way God work in, works in mysterious ways those who trust him have seen it number three we learn that people may fall and also may fall he say a thousand may fall on your side ten thousand on your right side but shall never touch you carry about send the river what a promise so brother and sister you need to understand one thing by your faith you shall live by your faith you shall be condemned so don't take and borrow somebody's faith to be your faith don't take and borrow somebody's faith to be you you are unique decide to believe god the best way you can until the end of your life leave alone whomsoever is saying whatever you want to say but be careful of believing the statement and the interpretation of people rather than your own interpretation because what is your protection is one thing from all those battle from all those challenges from all those issues faith and what is faith is a substance of something not yet seen. Is the ability to believe that you go to heaven while you've never been in heaven. Is the ability to believe that you can buy a car while you don't have even a damn shilling in your bank account. Is the ability to believe that you can buy a, a house or a, 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 a home while you're not working. And that's faith. So call it crazy. Call is it is a misunderstanding. Call is it a confusion. But one thing we know that is faith. Is the ability to walk out of the bed and say this cancer is gone. No matter what the doctor's report is saying about. That's faith. So this hour, 
I like us to raise our voice up and say, Lord, you're good. You're faithful. Your loving kindness and mass to us is very new and fresh. We are thankful to you. We are thankful to you. We are thankful to you. We are thankful to you because you've been so faithful. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your hand that has been with us, the one I ask God. Even seeing this morning is so wonderful, so miraculous, it's glorious. We adore you. We bless you. We exalt your holy name. Thank you very much for your angels who have been with us when we were sleeping. Who have made us to see this morning, not by power, not by might, but by your grace. Thank you. And the glory be to your holy name. Father, we thank you because today we are counted among the living. And we are not dead. We thank you today because your presence and your power is with us always. Your grace and love is fresh to our lives. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the brand new day that has never been there and will never be there. Thank you for the life. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for every provision given to us. I come before your presence and give you praise and worship you and glorify your name. I'll bow down and say, Lord, praise be your Lord. Thank you this morning. Thank you for this day. Glory be to your holy name. Your God, worthy of our praise, worthy of our power, worthy of our honor, and worthy of our glory. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Brethren, this morning, the subject that will lead us to our prayer by the leadership and direction of the Holy Spirit is coming from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18. 1 Kings, chapter 18. And uh, I would like us to talk about this story. And uh, we we'll get time, we'll be read, but I just want to paraphrase some few things for the purpose of our subject this morning. And it's titled... God of Elijah, answer me by fire. God of Elijah, answer me by fire. God of Elijah, answer me by fire. Brethren, there are times in life we need to ask God to answer our prayers our calling with fire. There are moments in life we have some urgent situation which without the Lord's interference, intervention, we're going to die. We're going to lose everything. We're going to lose even hope in our salvation. So it's when we call the Lord to answer by fire fire has the ability to destroy anything before it. It has the ability to destroy and eat everything. When the fire is too strong, there is nothing that can restrain from fire. That's why even hell is made up of fire. Brimstone, lightning, that's the forms that just make up fire. So, this morning, I don't know what situation you are going through. I don't know what kind of challenges you are going through. But I know 
that the recessed situation that requires an intervention of God who answers us by fire. Without that intervention, shame will be on your face. Without that intervention, people will laugh you to scorn. Without that intervention, your faith in God is going to be put into question. Without that intervention, your children might be expelled from school. Without that intervention, your job is at peril. Without that intervention, you cannot repay back your loan in the bank. So you need to pray like nobody else has prayed. If you read the book of 1 King chapter 18, you understand what I mean. It's a story, it's talking about Ahab, Elijah, and the other prophet. During those days, the land was prostituted by idols, and their god called Baali was laning the lives of the people. And that God was devil by itself. And we know that glory belongs to God. And he cannot share his glory with anyone. Now, if you read this, this book, the first king chapter 18, you find that the Lord decided to punish the God of Baali. How did it happen? Elijah asked them that, let's see who is God between God, Jehovah, and your God. So he asked them to build up altar, as usual, altars, a point of exchange. Those people agreed. I think they were such a way brainwashed in such a way they believed that that Baali is a God who can answer them. So, they agreed with the larger to build up the altar. And they started to pray. Morning to evening, their God never answered. They decided to cut themselves. Their God never answered. You need to realize one thing which is very important as we start this phase, this, this chapter. God can allow sometimes the powers of the enemy to work. But when himself has intervened, the power of the enemy become mute. Because power belongs to God. So when they call Baal, nothing happened. When they tried to call Baal, nothing happened until the evening. Then a man of God called Elijah came to action. And he kneeled down and asked even water to be put on the altar in such a way that it's not a matter of guessing. It's a reality that God answers us by fire. As he called upon heaven, the fire came from heaven and it just eat it up even the water. Everything that was put on the altar. That day, the Lord humiliated all the prophets of Baal. I see today the Lord humiliating every challenge and problems in your life. In the name of Jesus, that fire that ate up the altar, that ate up everything in the altar that Eli built, is going to eat and is eating up every problem, every trouble, every challenges, every difficulty in the name of Jesus. That sickness, they told you that cannot be healed. Because of this message today, I see you receive your healing now. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. 
corriendo rupos. Brethren, this prayer today is for someone who has been told that his her husband or his wife is divorcing them while they still love them. This is the day for someone who has been told that he needs to go to the office and receive termination letter. This is a day for someone who don't know what he shall eat next week, what he shall eat next month. And life has been so difficult for them. But God who answers us by fire is able to intervene today and make your way through. Brethren, I'm not trying to speak like I'm trying to motivate you. But I want to assure you, as you connect yourself to this prayer in this altar and pray with me, Together, according to the book of Matthew 18, 18 and 19, I see the hand of the Lord releasing fire from heaven and eating up all your problems, all your challenges, all your troubles in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Say, my Father, I give you glory because you have been so good to my life. I worship you. You are worthy to receive my honor, to receive my worship and praise in the name of Jesus. Say, my Father, my Father, I call upon your name this morning in the name of Jesus. That Lord, with this situation that has been so hard, so challenges and complicated, that you are able to intervene you are able to make a way in the name of Jesus. I understand of your ability to make a difference to my life, to excel me to your purpose and plan. Father, I bow down to your will. I bow down to your purpose. I bow down to your wisdom in Jesus' name. And I call upon your name that my Lord, this sickness, this disease that has been planted to my soul, die in the name of Jesus. I call upon fire from heaven to eat up this cancer, to eat up this sickness, to eat up this problem, to eat up this challenge in the name of Jesus. My Lord, there is nothing that is impossible with you. And I therefore call upon your name. Every family covenant for poverty, break in Jesus' name. Every family covenant for sickness, break in Jesus' name. Every family covenant for backsliding, break in Jesus' name. Every family covenant for evil, break in Jesus' name. Every family covenant for rust, break in Jesus' name. Every family covenant for losing business, break in Jesus' name. My Lord, I call upon fire. Lord, release fire in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, every trouble that is haunting my life, as haunting my father, as haunted my mother, as haunted my family, oh Lord, May fire from heaven, may fire from heaven, break it, break it, break it in Jesus' name. Father, I refuse to die young. I refuse to die before fulfilling my days. I refuse to die in mid of my days in Jesus' name. But I pray that you give me grace, that Lord, I may live to tell forth of your goodness to this generation, to the coming generation, and all days of my life, in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, this is morning. 
I commit my life again in your hands. Oh God, that answer us by fire. I pray, Lord, surround me by fire everywhere that the enemy might not see me. Every pestilence of the day, every hour of the night, against their calling, against their will in my life, break! Let it go back to the sender in the name of Jesus. I call upon your name, Lord, that in the midst of my situation, intervene, Father. Make a way for your own name to be glorified in my life. I put my life in your hands. Remember me, Lord. Release your grace and may I walk in thy fire in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you. I bless you. I glorify your name. You are worthy to receive my praise. You are worthy to receive my honor in Jesus' name. Brethren, I now want to pray for you as I finish this prayer in the morning and call upon the Lord to release the anointing for you to be free. The Bible in the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38 make us to understand that Jesus, who was anointed by God, walked here and there preaching good news and releasing, healing all those who are oppressed by the enemy. Today, as we call upon the anointing of God, that God who answers by fire shall set you free from every problem, every challenge, every sickness, every disease in Jesus' mighty name. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for our prayer this morning. Now, Lord, I call upon the power of Holy Ghost as this person is listening to this recording that, Lord, visit him by fire. God who answer us by fire make a release, set free for his life in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I soak this brother, I soak this sister in the precious blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Glory be to your name. Lord, I worship you. Blessed be you alone. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let's take together the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and mercy of God the Father be with us to then, now and forever. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>